I didn't ask to be born into a family where there was a lot of abuse. And I didn't ask for all this trauma that I experienced as a kid. What up, squad? Welcome back to the channel. Got some lotion on your face. Oh, shit. Good looking. All right. Good? Yeah, you do. All right. What up squad, welcome back to the channel. So this is gonna be a very serious video and I wanna start off by giving you guys a disclaimer. I am not a medical professional. Depression, anxiety can be very serious conditions and I am simply sharing my experience. I'm not telling you to do what I'm doing. I'm not telling you to think how I think. I'm simply sharing my experience with anxiety and depression and I'm gonna to explain to you guys how taking care of my body, right, with exercise and nutrition has helped me significantly manage my depression. Before we get started, guys, let's get this video to 4,000 likes. This is important content. We need to make sure that this content gets to the people who need it. So support the algorithm, hit the like button, and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, click the subscription button, turn on the post notifications, all that jazz, because you know what? We turn it up with the content. You feel me? And also, for a free resource, I have a fat loss guide where I give away all the tips, all the hacks that helps you speed up the fat loss process in a safe and efficient way. The link to that is in the description. Take advantage of that resource. All right, so look, depression for me, back when I was 360 pounds, was very intense. I used to live with this story in my head because I watched my mom struggle with depression my entire life. Um, so. I almost thought I was doomed or I was genetically programmed to have to deal with depression. And for a moment in time, I accepted it as my current reality, as, as my forever reality, I should say. I thought that, you know what, this is just a part of life. I'm depressed. And I used to have this victim mindset around the feeling of depression. That all has changed since then, but I definitely can relate to people who are experiencing that. So. Again, this is my experience. Now, there's different types of depression, right? There's chemical depression where your brain physiologically has issues uh, managing your mood, right? And managing your, your inspiration to do things. You just don't feel like doing anything. I understand what that's like, right? So there's the chemical side. And then I think there's the depression that we create for ourselves, right? So I'm gonna give you a little background I'm from Brownsville, Brooklyn. Through the New York City neighborhood of Brownsville, historically the most dangerous neighborhood in the city for violent crime. I grew up in a home where there was a lot of abuse, where there was a lot of... Um... <sighs> See, this stuff's not even easy to talk about. Right? I had a tough childhood. My mom did the best she could. Don't Let's not get it twisted. I had three meals a day. I had clothes. And, and shelter, always. But I, I grew up in a hostile environment. Anyone who knows anything about Brownsville, Brooklyn, they know it's gangs, it's crackheads, it, there's shootings, there's you know poverty all around me. So that alone for a child can cause stress, can cause depression, can cause anxiety. There's a lot of trauma that you accrue when you grow up in that environment. Now, that's the outside environment. Inside my home, there was a lot of abuse, right? I don't want to get into the details of that you know, because I don't want to put people's business out there, but I grew up in a very hostile environment. There was a lot of emotional, physical, drug, alcohol abuse happening inside my home. So, and I'm giving you guys all this background to give you an idea of why, as an adult, I was experiencing depression. I also, didn't have a solid male figure in my life to teach me how to be a man, to teach me how to navigate life. So there was a lot of me trying to figure things out on my own. So needless to say, I made a lot of mistakes. You know, I had a victim mindset. I grew up with a poverty mindset. I never learned how to take accountability for my own action and for my own life. So there was always someone else to blame. I didn't have confidence, you know, I 
didn't feel supported in the world. There's a laundry list of reasons why going into my adulthood, I didn't feel like I was equipped to navigate life. Now, let me explain how depression showed up for me. For me, it was these dark, heavy feelings of despair, if you will, right? That's the word that comes to mind. There was these, these feelings of just a lack of drive, of motivation to do anything. I didn't want to go to work. I didn't want to exercise. I didn't want to eat healthy foods. I didn't want to be around people, right? Depression for me was this dark cloud that seemed impossible to move, right? And it, it, it made my entire existence feel heavy, right? That's the best words I can uh, find to describe what depression was like for me. And it would happen really often because I had a lot of stress in my life. I had a lot of financial issues. I had a lot of relationship issues. I had confidence issues. I had um, unresolved trauma that, like, the, like I just said, was unresolved. And it caused me a lot of pain, right? Now, I don't believe that the type of depression that I experienced was chemical. I think I experienced depression, of course, because of the rough childhood has something to do with it, right? But I'm, I'm no longer the, the person that's going to blame my circumstances for my mental health. Yes, can I? Probably, but I will not because I like to take ownership of my state. I want to take ownership of the way my life looks, right? So I'm no longer going to say, yes, you know, I experienced depression because of X, Y, and Z in my childhood or this, that, or the third situation in my life. Um, I'm going to say that the dep my depression was caused by the fact that I made terrible choices. I made terrible choices. I didn't take care of myself. I didn't take ownership for my own actions. Everything was always someone else's fault. I was weak-minded. And I'm a, let's stop here for a second. I was a very weak-minded person and I did not know how to deal with adversity. And because of the fact that I didn't know how to deal with adversity, I would try to do things to escape the discomfort of adversity. And this was a problem. I ran away from the discomfort, and I think this is where a lot of men, a lot of people in general, but specifically men, this is where we do ourselves a disservice. Whenever we're feeling resistance, we attach depression to resistance, whereas in some cases, and I wanna say most cases, especially as it pertains to my life, this resistance is serving a very important purpose in your life. It is designed to either bring some of your weaknesses to the surface or bring some of the issues, your, your innermost issues to the surface so that you can see them and you can address them, right? But when you do things like eat because you're feeling depressed, depressed or you try to numb with sex or partying or alcohol or drugs and these sort of things that, that makes that feeling go away, you are not serving yourself when you do that. But most of us, and I get it, I've been there, this is what most of us do. We don't wanna feel that discomfort. We just wanna say, hey, it's depression, give me some meds, give me some alcohol, give me some weed, give me some coke, whatever your drug of choice is, or food, because that's a drug as well, right? We turn to these things instead of sitting in that discomfort and really analyzing like, what, what is this here for? What is this here to, to teach me? I feel like pain, is one of the biggest and life's best teacher. But when you avoid it, you miss the lesson. You, you don't take that opportunity to, to get to know yourself on that level. I feel like stress and, and, and anxiety and depression and resistance in your life, it gives you access or it gives you an opportunity to see the real you, right? We can be one person when things are great, right? When life is good, when everything's going well, it's easy to, to be a pleasant person, right? But who are you when the pressure is on? Who are you when, when you have to answer to some of the decisions that you made prior, right? When these, when these situations come to bite you in the ass, 
How do you show up then? What version of you shows up? Once I started taking care of my body and I started being more mindful of the foods that I put into my body and I started investing energy into exercise, what started to happen is I slowly began to gain confidence, right? And that term confidence gets thrown around a lot, but confidence is truly a superpower, right? Because the confidence that I gain through keeping the promise to myself and taking care of myself and not running away from the discomfort of the resistance that life was giving me, right? All these scenarios that were challenging me, whereas I used to eat to numb it, right? I now was looking for the lesson in it. So exercise, nutrition, of course, right? Let's talk a little bit about the science of how exercise helps with depression and stress and anxiety. It You release these feel-good uh, hormones, right? These endorphins that, that help you process the stress, right? Because it's just energy that's stored up. So you got to find a way to release it. Some of us, we try to numb it and exercise is a good way to actually release that stress energy from your body. It's also a good way to distract yourself, but in a healthy way, right? You can distract yourself by surrounding yourself with a group of people, right? And, and, having more social life, or you can distract yourself with members of the opposite sex or the same sex, depending on whatever your thing is. Um, or you can distract yourself by overeating fast foods and ice cream because it gives you that dopamine hit, hit right, right away. Or you can distract yourself with something that ultimately will serve you, right? Exercise, learning, just, just reading and, and, good nutrition. These are things that, yes, they distract you, but ultimately it makes you better. So there's that. <laughs> Here's the thing, man. I, I think a lot of us, we experience stress and depression and anxiety because of the choices we make. We make terrible choices that lead to situations that are stressful for us. And I'm not going to discount, right? I'm not going to sit here and, and and discount the impact of some of these situations that were beyond our control. I didn't ask to be born into a family where there was a lot of abuse. And I didn't ask for all this trauma that I experienced as a kid. But at this point, what am I gonna do about it? it? It is what it is. I can sit here and blame things or I can take ownership and say, hey, this was the hand that I was dealt. These are the scars that were caused by it. Now I have to heal, right? I have to, but, and that's up to me. That's not up to my mom. That's not up to my, my dad. It's up to me. It's up to me. So I'm a big fan of, as a man, just taking ownership of your situation, not being a victim. It's all about perspective and being able to switch your perspective is a power. It's a superpower because it's all about how you process things mentally. Like you can say, hey, this is depression, or you can say, hey, this is an opportunity for me to show up in a better way because this resistance that I'm feeling is revealing some weakness or, or it's revealing something that, that I need to address within myself, all right? So again, this was just me blurting off some of my experiences with stress and depression and anxiety. Uh, I know everyone's journey is different. This may not apply to you, but I think this will resonate with most people. This may resonate with a lot of people because a lot of our depression and anxiety may be self-imposed. These are scenarios that we are creating. And I think the first step in making any change is taking ownership. You have to take ownership. You can't, you, you can't give your, the power of your state to anything outside of you, right? If you're giving the power to your job, right? Your job is stressing you out or your relationship or your parents or whatever your situation is, then you have no control over that. But when you have the perspective like, hey, listen, I'm going to take ownership. This person is causing me stress because I am allowing it, this person to be in my life, or I'm allowing this relationship to be this way, or I am choosing to stay at this job or um, whatever, insert situation. As long as you look at it from a perspective of ownership, you then have the power to change it. All right. So again, just sharing my, my insight on the topic of depression and anxiety. Hopefully this resonated with you. Hopefully this helped. Comment below if you have any video suggestions, anything else you want me to take a deep dive on. I have a lot of experiences 
with uh, a lot of, of the challenges in life, and I, I love talking about it. All right, again, hit the thumbs up. Shout out to the Brick Squad. I love you. And remember, the body that you want is owned by a higher version of yourself. So evolve. Peace. She